You're listening to the Comic Crusaders Podcast. I am your host, Al Mega, CEO of Comic Crusaders and Undercover Capes. In this show, I'm sitting down with creators from all walks of life to talk about inspiration, process, the lessons they've learned, and a whole lot more. Wepa! What up, me? This is your boy, Al Mega. Welcome to a brand new Comic Crusaders Podcast. And today... We have an independent creative legend over here. Because, I mean, my man just keeps kicking out them Kickstarters like a madman. And it's one campaign funded, another campaign funded, making it rain like a mofo, this man. Truly, he got, listen, he just finished up a campaign. We had him on a bit ago. So we're going to catch up where he's at with that now. And this newest one that he's already working on, he's a madman. Who would do this to themselves? I think none other than a fellow New Yorker, fellow Northeasterner over here, I think. Uh, the one, the only, Mr. Trevor Fernandez. Lengarich. What's up, man? Doing, bro? Homie, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good, brother. Has so much going on all the time, but it is an absolute delight to be here. One yeah, of the most cool, energetic, bro. one of the most energetic hosts in all of comics entertainment, brother. It is a pleasure to be with you. Well, thank you, brother. Uh, let, let's get some of that energy going with you. But it, you don't need that coffee, bro. That's what <laughs> that is. Yeah, it's three o'clock somewhere. Uh, yeah. Thanks for coming on, bro. You know, talk about that last campaign because I haven't had you on uh, since the last campaign. I actually got to meet you in person. You yeah. know what I mean? At, at WikiCon. Uh, nice. Shout out WikiCon. Uh, nice little show. Um, uh, for sure, but you know, especially when you get to run into people you've spoken to, and you weren't the only one I ran into that I interviewed before, so it was actually nice. wonderful just to be, in, you know, there with the community in person. So, um, what's up, man? What, what what's been going on since that last campaign? And uh, it got funded, right? <laughs> oh man, yeah, we got beyond funded. Yeah, that that project made about thirteen thousand dollars, which was Beautiful. incredible. The uh, the audience really showed up for that book. Um, and, and it, and it, it was a real, real pleasure and a real honor that that was the book, um, to have been by far my most successful because that was me taking everything I had learned and, and all of the story that we had built for the previous five issues and, and bring in area 51, the Helix project to a close. So to know that there was that much love and that much energy around that project really meant the world. So um uh, uh since then you know last week the books came in hard, hard oh, to i know that, that this thing wants to remove everything but uh yep. any any green it will take out but hey <laughs> but hey it's uh you know it's it's great to finally have these here i'm actually in my kitchen right now uh which has turned into a distribution center because i had a 535 pound uh not crate um uh what's it called a pallet of, of okay. comics that showed a up pallet? in a week yeah, dude, a Man. week and a half ago. Hey, you're two, good, bro. Dude, 2,225 bucks showing up on my doorstep uh, that I fulfilled like a madman. At the moment, we're waiting on another 1,250 books, which are the, the new edition of issue two, um, so that I can get cooking on that. So it's it's been absolutely crazy, but you know what, man? This is the life I asked for, and uh, I'm taking it in stride. Yeah, man, don't even complain. It's a beautiful thing, brother. You know, listen, it, 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 it's blood, it's sweat, it's tears, it's hard work, but it's all worth it. And it's funny you say you're in the kitchen, because I'm actually about to smoke a strain called Kitchen Sink. So, hey, <laughs> there we go, bro. Good. The, the, boy. the world the world just, you, you know, connects in many different Dude, ways. Dude, I, I give you so much credit, man, because if I if I had gotten on my, my herbal stuff right now, I would be... So lax, <laughs> I would be leaning over the side of the chair, just like woozy eyed. So I give you, I give anybody credit, man. That that rises and that that, that uh, rises and grinds like that. You got, you got to smoke the right things, man. You smoke that sativa right before a show, you be woo whacked out, you be happy. <laughs> and then when you want to be easy, you do the indica, you know, uh, and, and you be chill. It just know what to do, when to do it. That's all it is, baby. You know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. Before we talk about this amazing looking campaign, Minutes to Midnight, bro, the, the hour between life and death. Gee, so dramatic. It's like a Latino novela right there, bro. <laughs> and, and, and I think you built it up like a novela, right? It's an anthology of sorts, if you will. It's, yeah, it's like a collection of short stories. I think the thing yeah. that differentiates this from, from, <laughs> from, from, uh, from an anthology is that you have one writer, one 
one vision kind of consistent throughout the four stories. But I'm working with four incredible art teams from all around the world that oh. also help to make those stories stand out. So it's like one of those very, movies where you get different stories, you know, different random people, but somehow there, there's a, a, a junction point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, somewhat, something like that. Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So before we get into this bad boy, because I got a dope presentation to show you folks. You can see the beautiful art. <laughs> Gee, this, this guy just keeps leveling all up from from book to book, project to project, you're a monster. Any lessons that you've learned from that last project that you are applying to this one? Um, the big thing for me was for, for issue six, I, I really leveled up my sort of distribution and my shipping process, which is probably the most boring part, but it is such a vital element if you are going to be doing crowdfunded creator own projects, you know, um, the, the, the quicker that you can optimize your system, the faster you can put out content. And so um, this time around, you know, I really took to using um, shipping softwares like Pirate Ship that can kind of okay. take take everything from uh, various spreadsheet sources that I export from Kickstarter and help me create a, a sort of label system. I got a thermal printer this time around. Nice. And uh you know, like uh, just just simple things like that that help to economize the system. I mean, you know, in one week I sent out 190 packages, and Oof. and that probably that, took you less than one roll of those thermal labels. So now you you're saving one roll versus packs of labels and ink. Dude, absolutely. Oh, and I, I used to you. back in the <laughs> like for the first five, I was an absolute idiot, man. I was handwriting all of those addresses, like. I and like Yo, but my, let me see your hands, but then I like this yet. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, at my at my peak, I was doing like 25 packages a day. And for Jeez. this one, I I did like 50 a day. So Whoa. you know it 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 really, really is a huge element. So if you're an indie creator out there um and you're doing more and more numbers, I would definitely say take the take take that little bit of your budget, put it towards optimizing your fulfillment system. It will pay dividends in terms of time and money down the road. So that was the big thing that I learned um, going into this project that I, I'm excited to use to speed up the process. Oh, wepa, wepa. All right, so talk about building the team for this project, or, or actually not even before that. Mm -hmm. When did this project even birth in the, uh, the FL verse over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. That's that's a that's a great title, by the way. Um, uh, you'll get your royalties on that, I promise. But um, it's weird. So these all of these ideas kind of came as uh, like in the middle of writing the Helix project. I had this real creative boom where I would have these these little concepts or these little moments that I would just put in a in a Google Doc for safekeeping later, and eventually uh i think i was like three issues in when i started thinking about wanting to do like an annual like i, I would almost consider this oh, like okay. a pocket watch press annual oh where it i'm collects, digging it okay. where it would yeah every year would collect a series of short stories that all have a theme that ties them to a time of day right or, or a right. time of day that to me represents a theme and of course the first one had to be midnight the death of the old day the beginning of the new and for me i i I, I really wanted to go through this idea that at midnight you are either becoming the worst version of the person you were yesterday or the best version that you're going to be tomorrow. And it was this idea that like when you're in that, that late night clarity or that late night, that the quiet of the evening, you know, you're either given clarity to solve the problems that you weren't able to solve before, or you, you reinforce the worst decisions that you made. Those are the moments where you, you text the, uh, the ex-girlfriend or the ex-boyfriend that you know, you shouldn't be talking to. And then the next thing, you know, six months later, things get ugly. Yeah. Or it's the moment where you're like, man, I just figured out how to solve this problem. That's been like lingering in my life for the last year, you know, because you've given yourself the time to think. And so, Really, when, once I kind of hammered out the theme, um, these these stories that I had started playing around with on, in a, on a conceptual level in the Google Doc kind of came to mind. And it's funny, man, because originally there were going to be six stories in this collection, but two of the stories as I was writing them doubled in size. 
And so I really wanted to give every single one of these characters' journeys the chance they needed to breathe and be as long or as short as they needed to be. Um, and so, you know, I when I thought about the theme of perspective, then, you know, I thought about how I want to handle that. And so the the, for example, the lead story in this collection, Reflections and Other Little Devils, is a sort of paranoia induced crime thriller. Um and that story is is ultimately one about sort of perception and control. And, you know, it's this idea that when you look at the reflections in the mirror, they're either going to confirm your 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 worst suspicions about yourself and the world around you, um, or they're going to allow you to be able to change and grow as you as you sort of begin to understand yourself. So the sort of pitch of this story, that I'm telling for that one is is a grim and moody detective story from the the writer artist team of of Area 51 the Helix Project. So I'm bringing Sam, who hey. uh, took over the last two issues of the Helix Project, absolutely killed it. But he is also coloring his own work in this story. Um, it, it features a um, Carlos Mancebo, who is a, a grizzled detective as he investigates a string of suicides linked to this uh, series of addresses from a stretch of property involved in a failed eminent domain seizure attempt. And so his discoveries and these drug laden flashbacks lead him into the gullet of this like saw esque murder case <laughs> that ends up putting his long dead drug addled marriage into question. And so ultimately uh, Carlos's story spirals into, into one of um, perception control and addiction and and this story you know it means a lot to me you know growing up i was definitely as as most people are i think you know i i struggled with with my understanding of myself and my self image and who i was and and sort of how looking at myself in the mirror changed my perception of the world around me and so i kind of wanted to take that to an entirely different level and tell this very cerebral and punchy and visceral story with sam and and let me tell you al man I mean, you've gotten a chance to see some of those pages, and oh, and, we're gonna see right now. But and, I mean, uh, I'm showing people that beautiful cover. And, oh and man! Just as you were talking about, you know, a, a glass and different perceptions. I mean, look at that. What you were speaking of. This is why I had to bring up the picture. It fit naturally with what you were saying. Thank you, man. Yeah, it's um, I, I mean, yeah, that that cover first and foremost is done by the incredible Marcio Freddi. He colored all of Area 51, the Helix Project. And he did um, the C covers for issues five and six. And uh, he's actually doing interiors for one of the stories in this book as well. And he he absolutely knocked it out of the park. I wanted something to really, you know, put on display all four of the stories in this collection and speak to sort of... Uh, the, the collapse of of perspective and and what that could imply for the for the project um and he he just he absolutely knocked it out of the park this this might be one of my favorite covers Bro, ever of any whenever of you see your logo smashing glass like that baby what the pocket watch and everything i'm digging it it's like you said it is an annual i could see it now especially with the pocket watch because you know pocket watch press baby hey yeah. that's where it's at yeah man Look yeah, at that's... that. Wow, that looks great. I think he made it look so so fitting to the brand and and, and how you, again how you broke down how the story is gonna be. I mean, this cover says it all. It's it's so beautiful, man. And he uh, you know, shout out to Marcio. He's been such a consistent member of the team, um, and, and just such a, a phenomenal talent. He really did, he really did put out the perfect cover for this project because it's so hard to try to distill something. Uh, in a cover that that boils a a singular story down to one iconic iconic image, and he somehow was able to do that with four stories. So Oof. that's that's Look incredible. Look at that page right there. Look at this gorgeous page. I got to show you some pages, folks. All right. Mm -hmm. Don't you this worry. is a first, by the way. This is a first. This is the first time anybody has seen Ooh! any of these pages. So hey, this it even before the pre launch on the pre launch hit it all right because you're gonna want this i'm gonna be we're gonna be showing you off some gorgeous pages i mean look at it paneling coloring everything vibrant page yeah but, man this uh, this the uh, this page is from the bear market businessman um that is that absolutely stunning art is from ryan best who did art and colors for this story 
Um, the the sort of elevator pitch for it is that uh, it takes place centuries in the future in this loud and neon adorned New York City as it weighs down upon the world's richest man who somehow has everything and nothing at all. And so on the edge, he has to figure out how the key to survival is choosing to live. Um, so this is a deeply, deeply personal story. Um, and and honestly, I think it, it might be one of my most emotionally honest stories I've ever read. Hey. hey, oh snap, folks. You know what that means. And then I love this logo here with this polvo in the background. I mean, <laughs> Well, make, is, is that powders are making him melancholy? I don't even want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. uh, the marvelous misadventures of the melancholy man. And then again, look at mm. these tate tits. Yeah, man. They, these, 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 these were absolutely stunning. Uh, I'm working with an incredibly talented um, Mexican comic book artist named Steph C. Um, as you can see, her artwork is just so, so vibrant and emotive. Uh, it, it is really like I, I would say like and I, I, I hate making comparisons, but it brings to mind like a Pixar animation. It's just full of so much life. Um, it is. And so this story, The Marvelous Misadventures of the Melancholy Man, is the only one that is presently planned to be syndicated throughout every anthology that I do every oh. year or every annual. Okay. Um, so so throughout the, the next several uh, short story collections, this supernatural coming of age story will follow an empathic boy who turns others woes into goals into gold. And so Midas, which is named after King Midas in the, the Shakespeare play, uh, must learn to find balance in a life where a simple touch could mean healing someone's mind at the cost of his own. And so oh. this first story finds him sort of entangled in the childhood conflict. Um, that kind of forces him to face down this moral pendulum and leads him to making an acquaintance with a familiar figure to any longtime comic book fan. So that's really, really exciting. It has a little bit of a sort of a a character that is very meta to any uh, comic book lover. Okay. And, and ultimately, this story is a metatextual exploration of self-sacrifice and self-preservation. You know, this story is for all the people who you know, felt like they grew up kind of giving up too much of themselves to people mm -hmm. that might not have deserved it. And, yeah. uh, you know, as we as we follow Midas throughout the next couple of uh, installments of his story, you you see him come of age and you see him learn to balance that. Right. There are moments where he begins to understand that he's he's being too self-sacrificial, but but he becomes too bitter about it. And what happens with when somebody has these incredible capabilities you know becomes bitter and what does that mean for him as a character and so yeah steph absolutely knocked it out of the park they're beautiful and then we got this bad boy here two reflections and other little devils oh god this sounds already craziness i mean look at this oh snap yep. what what thanks yeah bro this is what? the uh this is that detective story i had mentioned before the one that, that is primarily a story of Sort of, sort of this sharp edge story of perception, control, and addiction. And as you can see, Sam is is going crazy experimental. We're really pushing ourselves to stretch our understanding of the comic book form. And uh, this is that's persistent throughout the entirety of this 22 page uh, uh, behemoth of a quote unquote short story. Whoa, so, that's uh, wait. So that one story is, is double deuce in, in this book. It's yeah. This is one of those stories that doubled in size. Uh, this wow. was originally going to be about a twelve-page story, and as I was writing it, I the the po the point at which I was going to stop just didn't make sense for me, and it really grew and evolved, and uh, it turned into something that I think is is ultimately the best thing I have ever done. Whoa, that, that's big talk, Trev. So where were you reaching when you were uh, reaching into when you were writing this? Uh, well, I think part of it was that I, I always loved sort of a detective story, the, the sort of the melancholy poeticism of, of, of an aging detective. Um, I think it, it gave me the opportunity to be a little bit more of a, it's weird to say flowery because some of the, <laughs> some of the, the, the sort of the poetry of, of this character's internal voice is very morbid, but there is a, a sort of you know, like I said, there is a little bit of a floral element to it. So I get to do that and make it sort of gritty. And that as a writer was very satisfying. But 
Um, I wanted to tell a story about how the reflections that we look at control our perception of ourselves and the world around us and take it to an extreme. And what's crazy is for those of you who are um, uh, in Connecticut or have lived in Connecticut, this page uh, kind of puts us on display. This story takes place in my hometown of New London, Connecticut. That's the wa oh, okay. that's the yeah, that's the waterline in New London. Oh, man. Nice. So did you write particularly seeing sitting there? <laughs> no, man. I, you know, it's. I mean, I've, I've, I lived in New London almost my entire life, um, and it actually plays on the history that New London has with Pfizer. When Pfizer came in and invoked eminent domain twenty years ago to, uh, you know, do what some people would say is is theft when they they took a lot of land from homeowners in order to build their lab and now you know 20 years later uh they're they're backing out of new london after taking people's homes away and so i kind of asked myself well, yeah my, i they kind of asked history. right yeah and i i kind of asked myself what if the eminent domain um invocation failed how would they go about getting the land? And so you have this oh. string of quote unquote suicides that occur across the property lines mm. uh, over the course of the next 20 years. And somehow or some way, this company ends up acquiring the land for a, a discounted price, right? Because there are deaths occurring on the properties. And so Carlos has to reopen this investigation um, several years down the line. And, you know, some of it begins to lead into some very unpleasant um uh, some unpleasant memories with his ex-wife, as you can see at the bottom of that panel there. Yeah. I mean, you could tell in his face, he looks stressed. Like, oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. Pobre Carlos. <laughs> yeah. And what is this one? You gave me no image other than this F and T's here, bro. Trevor, you are a tease, tease, tease. <laughs> the fleeting war. Immor what, what is time war? Uh, time fleeting war immortal? What is going on here? So this this is this is the other story that ballooned in size. This this legitimately doubled. Um, this is a a Dante Alighieri esque historical fantasy with like a traditional comedy element. Where you know, I, I, it kind of pulls from traditional comedy in the sense that uh, it is incredibly tragic, and and I, I kind of explore comedy as something that is eternally bound to tragedy, and so. It follows two nearly immortal warlords as they reconvene throughout every great war in human history uh, to settle a conflict which spans um, from a time before time was measured to the end of all of humanity. And so this is a, a timeless story about the changing landscape of war, conditioned adversity, and of course, that we will never have enough time. Um, and this story is incredibly personal. It, it evolved from this sort of cheeky satirical comedy to this larger Dante-esque uh, tragic comedy um, that plays on the idea that, you know, that, that ideals are, are temporary, right? We, we fight these wars based on these ideals that last for a, a generation if they're lucky. Um, and yet the hate that lingers on is, is immortal at times. Yes. They, they outlive, they outlive generations of people. And so I really wanted Sadly. to tell us, I really, yeah, I really wanted to explore that uh, through these two characters who, um, who, who are, are, you know, there from the beginning to the end of all of humanity and uh, watch as, as their conflict with each other uh, changes and evolves based on time and how, you know, our understanding of what it means to, 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 to beef with one another for all intents and purposes uh, evolves. And, uh, you know this this story this story is really really special and i think it's probably the most complex sort of the thematically the most complicated story i've ever told just in the way that we we follow these two um and the changing sort of atmosphere of their quest and their conflict against one another um actually if you want we can also show that first page to your viewers to your you audience first page first Ooh, and foremost it is okay. pretty gorgeous so I'll, I'll pull that up for you guys just because i can't not show out when i'm here with mr al Mick. yeah please show me don't, don't, don't be teasing me like that man but here you go folks i'm showing you while we wait a bit right there that pre-launch page i have it also below 
click away, show that love. Let me take off mine because what, ladies and gentlemen, get ready. Oh my God, I just see it small here. I'm getting excited. Holy smack. Woo, oh my God. This is like right up my alley type shit, dude. Whoa. I'm glad you dig it, man. Bro. Bro, just the rain throughout the, the, the movement, man. It's eye candy the way that your eyes could move on this. And holy shit, whack. He needs to yeah. see the dentist tomorrow, poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. This is this is such a special story. And and no. uh, I think I think the fact that this this tale evolved into what it did from where it started is wow. Kind of like I, I'm I'm so proud of it because I think it shows the the maturity um of my storytelling over the last couple of years and how you know I, I I won't be satisfied with fine. You know, I wanted to take this story um and make it everything that it could possibly be. And I, I really feel like we did that, man. Like this story, um when I <laughs> this is gonna sound so dumb. Um when I wrote the end of the story, I cried. Like See? I was it's not dumb, eh, man. Shit, you know, your feelings, your character, you're in the moment, bro. You know, God knows if you know if you had a, I had a nice little drink on the side that was just warming up to the emotions even more. Like, oh man. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's it's a it's a really I think it's a very powerful story, um, oh, and and it's something I'm incredibly proud of, and it, it is really a uh, a pleasure to be able to do to work on interior art with Marcio who. Ooh. Colored the entirety of the Helix project. Ended up doing covers by the end of the series. Did the that A cover uh, that you that you showed off at the beginning of our stream. Nice. Um, you know, just to watch our creative relationship evolve over the last two years, and to be able to give him the opportunity to show up and show out for um, for our audience that we've been building all this time is is really really great. And and you know, for me to be able to tell such a, a complex, emotionally and thematically layered story with him really feels. Um, like the perfect first project for the two of us for, with this new creative relationship. Uh, well, keep growing like that and working. It's a beautiful thing. You definitely guys make a, a real dynamic duo for real. And you know, I really can't wait to see what else you guys are going to do. So what's up? When, when can we start spending our money, Trev? When, when, is, when can everybody just start reaching into their pockets, pulling out them cards and saying, this is what I want next? So May 23rd, we launch in the morning. Uh, I believe we're launching around 8.15 Eastern. Ooh. So for all you early risers, get in on it. We will have early bird tiers. They are limited. Oh, oh. How limited? On... How limited? Oh, man. So each, teaser, there are, folks. I believe there are four or five early bird tiers, only about 15 to 20 each. Um, so you can get in on the project early, get a little bit of a discount as a, as a thank you for, for being part of the crowd that kickstarts this project to life. Um, no and I believe, <laughs> I believe the early bird tier, uh, will only be available for the first three days and we'll have that limited quantity. So you got to get in on ASAP. We will also have, uh, two slots to get drawn into this book. Oh, which snap. I'm really, really excited for. We actually um, drew in two backers from Area 51 issue six into this okay. project. So the, oh, the, nice. the the page that you had seen from Reflections where you have the window blinders separating the panels, uh, that person, Brian Cabra, shout out to him, has been an incredible supporter of the Helix Project, ended up getting drawn in in, in all of his cool. glory. Uh, and uh, in Time Fleeting War Immortal, uh, Another backer, Mr. Brian Buendia, uh, will be getting drawn in basically as um, this this major historical figure in the the <laughs> Norman Conquest uh, as King Harold. So that's really really exciting. Hey, 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 there we go. Look at that. Who who would have known? He picks in and becomes a king. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. See, but that's what Trev makes happen for you folks. You really here, and you really got awesome stuff planned for this amazing project. Again, drops tomorrow. So Get ready. That pre-launch page. Look, no excuses, folks. The links is in front of you. It's also below. Click away. Sign up. Put in that email because you're going to want this bad boy. Because Trevor is an amazing, amazing creator. And the team he has, as you saw via those panels, is just as dope. So we got to make it happen, folks. This, this is what independent is all about. 
know, support amazing independent creators. They're like, yo, Pocket Watch Presses is was popping, kiddo. So once this becomes successful, because everybody knows it will be, what's next, brother? Uh, have you planned that far ahead? Because you, you already telling you're doing one project, you're thinking of the next already. So I'm sure you brought five projects ahead, but let's just talk about the next one. Uh, I'm very, I'm very, very excited. So uh, we haven't publicly announced the title yet, but it was teased in the fourth issue of Area 51, the Helix Project. So if you go back and, and read through that with a fine tooth comb, you can actually figure out the title to my next project. Um, right now, it is presently planned to be a 12 issue series. So oh, I'm, wow. yep. So we're doing our first maxi series um, to, for lack of better terms, I would say, you know, just to give you an idea, it is like inception meets paradise lost meets the illuminati it is okay. a sort of supernatural political okay. thriller um about control the the main theme of that story is control and uh i'm i'm just i'm so incredibly excited to bring that project to you guys it is it is i mean man it it takes everything that i've learned from the helix project from doing this minutes to midnight um annual and and puts it on full display. I think oh, I shit. think it is it is bulletproof. I'm what that so, means so is watch out, man, because the FL verse is on its way, baby. But yet another chapter and another chapter. He making it rain more than college. This guy, let me tell you. <laughs> Woo! So I love independent creators, man. They make it happen. They do things. They're giving you the business and, and some real shit that's not going to be layered with, 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 with editors trying to tell you, no, this, that, the other. No, these are real, beautiful, unique stories, man, that, that, that are untouched by, by real human beings, bro. All right? So make sure to check out Minutes to Midnight again, yo. That pre-launch. Don't sleep, folks. And most importantly... You want to stay tuned to that next project, too, on top of this one. And, of course, you know, get the stuff from the past. Follow everything Pocket Watch Press on that link tree of his, all right? Also, the link is below. You got everything there. He, the, people could catch up on anything prior as well via those links, right? And make it rain mm -hmm. on, on catching and up again all six issues of Helix, for example, if they wanted it. Absolutely, yeah. And Ooh. they'll be available on the Kickstarter as well. So oh! if, you, if you want a gloriously discounted bundle pack to grab Minutes <laughs> to Midnight and Area 51, the Helix Project, they are available. For those of you that are digital readers as well, I believe you'll be able to get the entirety of the Helix Project and Minutes to Midnight for like 20 bucks digital. That's oh, that's like 200 pages worth of material. So I think it's an absolute steal. And you get behind the scenes features. You get both editions digitally of Area 51, the Helix Project 1 and 2. Because when we released the second printing, not only did they come with new covers, but they both came with behind the scenes features on a oh, little damn. bit of the production of the book. You can see how the sauce is made. So I'm really excited to be able to bring all of that to you guys and uh, give it to you at a, at a great price. You know, this Minutes to Midnight uh, annual is 64 pages. I tripled Ooh. my output for you guys and i'm giving you something Boy. toothsome with with some of the best collaborators on the face of the planet uh folks whose names you might not know but you absolutely should and and i'm excited for you guys to read this one it's it's complex it's emotional uh we did our best to be as thoughtful storytellers as we could possibly be and if you liked area 51 the helix project or you ever thought about giving it a try like i said before it takes everything that i learned from that project and cranks it up to 12. Oh, shit. What? People, I don't think they are ready, but get ready. All right? It's going to be dropping on us. And the lastly, last question, because as I mentioned earlier, I got to see you in person at Wicked Con. How about out the fans? When they, when can they see you in person? Any shows upcoming soon? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're taking this next month off so that we can do the kickstarter joint and mental health um, on top of that right you gotta wrap your legs bro because you're walking a lot bro <laughs> who has who has time for that uh, <laughs> um, so my next show i'll be at heroes con in charlotte north carolina i'm incredibly excited it's one of my favorite conventions um it's it's very comic centric and it, it focuses on the lifeblood of our industry which is beautiful and then of awesome. course for you connecticut slash new england natives july i'll be at terrific con at the mohegan sun Ooh. where you probably be able to see mr al mega with yeah me. man i'm so. gonna be chilling 
definitely got to be chilling, you know, celebrating. You'll hear my wet paws all over the floor. Don't you worry. <laughs> Dude, what would it, man, convention wouldn't be the same without it. Yeah, man, we got to do it, man. Make everybody shrink, get everybody happy. That's why we do it, Comic Crusades podcast. And, you know, again, blessing and hanging out with amazing independent creators like Trev. Telling you, even though it didn't quite work out last time because there was shitty phone service, he, he we were supposed to hang out. I didn't get any message, and even my boy was asking, Yeah, did he message you? I'm like, Yo, bro, I'm not getting anything. And I tried to message you, and I guess nothing was even outbound. So, thank yeah. you, T Mobile, for giving me shitty service. I'm gonna I'm flash you right now. <laughs> I also you. have T Mobile, so that we were double in trouble. Man. Oh, hell yeah, apparently. <laughs> Why T was for trouble, mobile? That's what that was. <laughs> but, yeah, man, hey, for man. real. But we we got time. terrific con, man. We'll oh. celebrate. We'll celebrate and, the end of the Helix Project, the new book, and everything. more, and more. Plus, plus, how many signatures you're gonna take that hand? Don't you worry. We'll, we'll 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 get somebody to come over and hold your arm up and make sure that your hand is okay <laughs> as they walk into the bar over there at terrific con, and we chill. Don't you worry, bro. Absolutely, <laughs> thank you, All man. Right. Thank you, thank you for no, you for, rock, for sharing your platform with this book, man. It's such a personal project, and uh, it is a blessing to have someone uh, like you, Al, that's so enthusiastic and so ready to share um, your spotlight with this project, man. So thank you. Thank you for having me. That's my pleasure, and it's my honor. And that goes to you and every independent creator out there. This platform is yours. You want to be on the show, just follow us at Comic Crusaders everywhere. Pop over a DM and say, hey, I want to be on. Send me a link to your project. And if it's not going to be my show because I'm crazy scheduled, I have other partners, too, that will definitely take care of you, that are just as energetic and, and, and um, you know, uh, uh, pushing you uh, towards the positive momentum over here. And with that, I'm Al Mega. You know what it is. Check out my Undercover Capes family, Comic Crusaders channel. Subscribe to this one. Turn on the notifications so you know when we're speaking to amazing creators like Trevor and a whole lot more, baby. Hasta la próxima. Much love. Wepa! Thank you for listening to the Comic Crusaders podcast. If you like the content, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, please visit ComicCrusaders.com and our extended podcast family over at UndercoverCapes.com. And also, make sure to download the Comic Crusaders app on the Google Play Store today. 